While this is the uh, first segment of the vlog, of the BTS vlog for Wednesday, November 6th, and it's 10 o'clock in the evening, uh, it's certainly not the beginning of the day. Uh, what happens is that sometimes when you get involved in a project, it becomes a little difficult uh, to keep track of the time. I mentioned this before. And while you intend to uh, uh, get things on schedule, more often than not, uh, because you do lose track of a time on a project, it does present a bit of a problem because when you try to schedule things out and you forget the time that, that you've allotted for things and you run over time, it then throws everything else off that you intended to do. And that's certainly the case here. So basically what you may, may notice is that while we started off with a schedule and, and we try to keep to it, and I said is that you try to keep to it to a certain degree, but if it's necessary, what you need to do is you need to, at some point in time, uh, if you find things really going off schedule, just dump the schedule and at some point in time later when your 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 average schedule uh, in terms of what you're able to do on a daily basis goes back to somewhat normal. And as I say somewhat normal because it, it it's only normal when you've sort of gotten a handle of all the work that has to be done and you're okay with it. But that doesn't last too long because you, what you want to do is, particularly if you're trying to push the boundaries and try to sort of keep yourself on the edge of knowledge, uh, sort of pushing these boundaries, then you never want to be in your comfort zone for too long. You don't want to be in a comfortable position for too long. You want to push yourself out. So this is sort of the case here. Uh, I'm doing some more work on the uh, IPTV content. This is for the box and uh, how people, if they want to do open IPTV, can get the content that they want. This is sort of looking at that. Uh, and I think looking at what's available out there in terms of a significant amount of content and in the quality of content that they would expect. If you go off of cable TV, will you be able to find uh, comparable quality content but that's not on the major uh, cable product. In other words, they're not part of the major media companies or, or, or restricted in any way. Uh, can you find a sufficient amount of materials uh, to compensate for not having uh, your standard TV cable? And is what you have oh, sorry, satisfactory? If not, then what's sort of the what sort of the alternative? What 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 options do you have to sort of one find new materials, or if you want to create new materials? So uh, that's sort of the thing I've been working on here. I've also been doing the uh, YouTube stroll, and I ended up going by um, uh, one of the channels called uh, Lady Dottie, and it's uh, Davida Gallagher. I think that's how I pronounced her name right. I've sort of been watching her. Uh, she's she's a lot of these uh, vloggers that are on YouTube tend to be filmmakers, artists, so on and so forth, uh, and they they begin their uh, careers. Um, on uh, YouTube and so she started her channel out about a year ago uh, a little over, say a little over a year ago uh, when she moved out to California so they show her moving uh, she films herself moving from California from Florida to California all the different things that are involved in that and so I'm going back today watched on on uh, she came up on my uh, subscription feed uh, watched her videos she was uh, at Disney World uh, joking about how uh, her uh, boyfriend continuously jokes about proposing uh, in one of the rides there. Uh, but uh, they had something about when she was at Disneyland talking about uh, that one of the castles there, uh, one of the houses, or it was actually haunted. And this sort of got me thinking about the uh, TV show. Uh, Ghost Hunters uh, in that uh, team called TAPS. I watched these sort of paranormal investigation shows on, on these uh, quote-unquote reality TV channels 
or the History Channel, stuff like that. And there's so much that's unreal about it that's, that's sort of fake. And the question is, uh, would, I, would I or should I start doing paranormal investigations in terms of filming it, but do a more significant job at trying to see what's going on out there? Uh, because I am a physicist, and it, this is sort of the, going into paranormal investigations. You'd be going into metaphysics in terms of understanding uh, the world beyond our world, and to see if there's if there's anything there, or what we've missed about this. If there if we've missed anything, because uh, they always talk about uh, electromagnetic fields, they talk about uh, changes in temperature. They bring out all this equipment and. Most of the equipment they bring out are all is all physics oriented. It's all about physics. So certainly a physicist and a quantum physicist could go into a paranormal uh, uh, investigation and determine whether or not you're actually dealing with an interaction of another world with the physical world and see if that actually occurs or whether there's something more there uh, or not. And this sort of, sort of poses the question uh, where to go next and I'm not really too sure exactly how to do that but uh, or where to go from there but uh, I'll sort of look, look at it so this is something I'm sort of mulling over in my mind and this is what happens when you're doing the YouTube stroll YouTube stroll does give you ideas on different things different projects different directions you can go in and uh, get your mind kind of moving into in, into that direction even if it's briefly to sort of see what what possibilities are there. But anyways, uh, on for the rest of the day. There's still an enormous amount of work to get through here today. I still have to s finish working on the language lab. I did some more work on the browser on here on the top screen TV so that it works better. And now it's a matter of sort of lining different things up and trying to figure out how to uh, improve the uh, metrics on the IPTV so if I can do more things than uh, I've currently got set up for there. In other words, I'm going to try to expand the capacity of the device. Anyways, that's it for now. I'll talk to you guys in a bit, in a couple hours, to let you know how things are going, probably near the end of the day, uh, or the last segment anyway, so that's it for now. It's the last segment of uh, the BTS vlog. Uh, whew. for the November 6th and 7th, straddling those two days. Uh, I had actually I've been up for a while, uh, did an enormous amount of work. I've been basically, since last night, what I've been doing is I've been working on the, uh, what you call it, the, uh, IPTV. Uh, I've been doing more configuration work with it trying to get it to do more stuff, trying to get it to work better. So in other words, even when you get something in a configured state where it's working okay, in periods of times you're gonna, you don't get it exactly 100%. You get it maybe 80%, 85%, and then you start nudging it forward to more and more what you want as you go on. I think it's all, as things change, you also uh, learn how to deal with the curves uh, in terms of different problems that pop up and different challenges like I say uh, a programmer changes a code in uh, in one system or in one application is there another way around in other words you look for you look for workarounds when something doesn't work anymore or uh, something that worked well before doesn't work well now is there something you can maybe do maybe you can adjust maybe you can change uh, these are kind of the things that go into configuration so that the product works properly uh, Particularly, as I say, you want to advise somebody on getting IPTV. Well, if you haven't gone through a lot of the stuff yourself to know what's there and what's not there, and what are the challenges behind going into IPTV, particularly if you don't want to go with a, a cable package, uh, then what happens is, is that you, if you don't know this stuff, then you're not going to be able to advise them properly on what's... One, what's out there in terms of the option, but two, the challenges to uh, bringing these options into the IPTV solution. So this is sort of what's been going on. Uh, I've been doing this now since last night. Still doing it now. Uh, I'm working on a issue with uh, 
with YouTube, uh, they're now trying. They're trying to pull all their accounts together, uh, and the way they've done their interface on the IPTV, it confuses the login. So sometimes, when you want to log into a um, uh, another uh, another account, and you want to keep these accounts separate, uh, it kind of confuses the two accounts. So the, this is what I'm working on here. I'm trying to sort of work on how to sort of keep the accounts separate so they don't blend into each other, uh, reduce the mistakes, and then go forward from there. Uh, I just sort of worked on the recess channel. The next channel I'm going to work on now uh, is going to be on the languages channel. That's the, uh, the Byzantine Antiquity Studies Institute channel. That's the TV channel that I have for there. Uh, what else is there? Uh, I'm still looking into uh, parad oh, yeah. paranormal investigations to see whether or not ghost hunting is something worthwhile to pursue. Uh, I'm really not too sure about that. Um, I might put some feelers out there to see uh, how it actually is going to work out. And, and, and basically, do, I can do that by searching around the uh, uh, around the internet to see uh, what actually. Uh, is going on. Uh, one of the things I forgot to talk about yesterday when I went on my YouTube stroll is that uh, Lady Dottie um, on her channel uh, was at Disneyland and the funny thing that I that I thought is because they have this these whole all these rides with a lot of animatronics on it these uh, basically robots that look realistic and the first thing that came to my mind is that a lot of times they have these nature rides that are animatronic, and particularly in Florida, uh, when they talk about because Disney is one of these supposedly green co co companies, and they always talk about being green and being environmental, and yet when you go on these rides, you think that as as they say you're in Florida, and it has like you want to see alligators, you want to see this, you want to see that, uh, in terms of the life, the various different wildlife. Instead of keeping the wildlife the way it is, they drain an entire swamp or an area, build a ride over it, and instead of having live animals, they have animatronic animals. So, they, you know, I think the way Disney World and Disneyland has um, these different countries or in different cities inside of it, uh, that, that at one point in time you, you could actually view that uh, uh, Disney World and Disney, in order to create a perfect world, Will create an all animatronic world, so it, there won't be any human beings left uh, because we're imperfect, of course. And the only way to get a perfect society, to get a utopian society, is to replace everyone with animatronics. <laughs> so you would have uh, basically the world would become an animatronic Disney world, uh, whatever that's going to end up looking like or <laughs> coming into. But the thing is, if, you, if everything's animatronic, who goes on the rides? If if we're all animatronic. And no one is around to see anything, then why build it? Oh, but I guess this is kind of why, after the utopians, uh, in terms of the socialists, came around, the next logical conclusion to the utopians were the nihilists and the anarchists. The nihilists and anarchists were the uh, postmodernists who believed that nothing existed in reality, that everything was concept. Uh, and the anarchists took that to the nth degree, where now they wanted to destroy uh, society, establish a society, and create an anarchist society where nothing really mattered. It was it was it was free rule for everybody. But if you think as you look at the anarchist society, the anarchist society does not last that long. If you look, go back in history and look at anarchy, anarchy as a um, as a social existence. You will find periods of time where uh, uh, countries and cultures were uh, anarchists, but the anarchy system quickly fell apart and became a uh, warlord state. In other words, uh, they became uh, called feuding or, or warlike tribes. So there, there's no real such thing as a uh, consistent or a maintained anarchy state. It's simply the anarchists exist for a brief period in time. Once the anarchists uh, are done, and that's uh, maybe it's not even five, ten years, uh, what comes in are the uh, warlords. 
and that's the society that you end up living in. Uh, and it's not a nice society. So, where do we go from here? Uh, I think is, is that we sort of look to see what's going on uh, with, with people, how how people see things, and if we see things that are going towards anarchy, sort of if, if we can try to steer away from that anarchy. But then again, you don't want to go toward, towards the uh, Disneyland animatronics uh, society either. The Utopian society is another way. I think we, we want something that's a little different than that's different than that. We want a society that's free and open, but we don't want anarchy. So these are things that will have to be discussed, and, and it will be discussed in more detail in the Insta vlogs. Right now, uh, I've got a lot more work to do. I've got to get ready because I'm going to be going to church tonight. Tomorrow is 